camera down. Hello, hello, hello. I am gonna share with you a project that I'm working on right now about inflatable architecture, inflatable floating architecture. And I'm gonna take you along on my experiments today. So the first thing that I wanna show you is, I've been working with sheet vinyl, trying to make inflatable forms, which has been very challenging, surprisingly challenging. Here is like a shower curtain liner, right? Very thin vinyl material. And I used um, vinyl cement to create a valve, which by the way is coming from beach balls <laughs> that I'm cutting up because this was the cheapest way to source them. This did not uh, inflate well. The vinyl cement that I'm using, HH66, is better suited for patches, which is why this has stayed in so well, the, the valve, as well as this patch that I put on, this beach ball material patch put on. Those work very well, but the seaming, right? The seaming doesn't work so well. The next prototype that I have is this nice pink one, this nice pink little bladder. This was from an inflatable dolphin that was around in the studio. We cut it up, it was tragic. I also tested a prototype on the heat roller, um, using heat to um, seal the edges. This does not work at all. It immediately comes undone when it inflates. And the closest I've gotten to is this little square prototype with the vinyl cement. It also has a beach ball patch, as you can see. It has these very annoying um, little, like, I keep calling them like rivulets or rivers. Just these little creases that happen when I put the two pieces down together. There are other people working in the shop right now. But if I put this underwater, you would see air seep out of exactly these little rivulets. Today, I have an idea about how I can make this stick together without any rivulets forming, and I'm going to test it with you. I'm going to show you this circuit that I've put together. Okay, let me walk you through this circuit that I've created here. I have a pump you see here, which is just a motor with an in and an out. I have all this tangle of wires. I'm very bad at soldering. The Arduino is controlling it from pin 9. It's hitting this resistor right here. This transistor here, which heats up when it's in use, which then takes it to we have a diode that prevents um, any kickback from this 12 volt motor hurting my Arduino, um, along with the 12 volts of power here to this pump. That is it for now. We're gonna be hooking up some pressure sensors to this system in the future, and hopefully creating some interesting like pumping motions, maybe by bio using biomimicry. I've set these up, I've cut these out of the same sheet. I've cut the little hole for this piece to fit through. Now when I use this, I have to paint it onto the vinyl, let it sit for two to five minutes, and then stick it together. And today what I'm gonna be testing, is I'm gonna paint just one side at a time, or maybe two sides at a time, and see how perfect I can get it so that there aren't those little rivulets. I'm gonna go put on my safety gear. Now this will be, thankfully I don't have to put my mouth on this, so I don't have to worry about cementing my mouth. I feel pretty dumb narrating this video out of a half mask respirator. Wow. So here's my beautiful prototype. I'm going to give it five whole minutes before I try and put it on the pump. So what was I wearing for safety? I was wearing these glasses because sometimes the glue makes my eyes hurt and that seems shady. I was wearing this half mask respirator, which is probably the most important part with these canisters that help me breathe good for me air and not cancer or deformed baby's air. I was wearing an apron because I didn't want to mess up my clothes. And I was wearing those blue nitrile gloves, which we learned are actually very little match for the glue. I am very glad that it ruined my gloves and so it touched my skin. I've seen some other videos on YouTube of people using HH66 without any gloves. Uh, I don't know if they were using respirators or other safety equipment, but always use your safety equipment because this is the kind of stuff that can mess with your health in ways that you just don't even know. Suspected of damaging fertility or the unborn child. All right, it's been well over five minutes. I know the audio's shitty. We're going to deal with it. It is so 
much fun. Like, oh, you look really great. Oh, I didn't stop recording. Say hi. Hi. It's the cutest. Looks like a little dumpling. Let's see if there's any leaks. Oh my God, there isn't. Oh my God, I did it. I finally did it. Wow. No bubbles. Wait, very few bubbles. Oh, right there. This is the trouble, huh? I will call this a successful experiment for sure. Yay! Okay, I'm really excited about this. Yes, it's leaking around here, but I've made many prototypes where so that's not a problem. And I think the idea is that no matter how well I do it, if you press hard enough, it will break. For prototyping, it's enough. The next prototype will be some sort of long form with different kind of glued enclosures. All right, and here's our moment of truth for this piece. You see I have segmented a diamond in the middle. I have patched it here. Hopefully it will stay inflated, but... <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay. So, two issues. Wow. This came undone. But you saw it folding while it didn't. This is a mixture of a failed and successful prototype. This is really close to popping right here. So, I don't know how sustainable this glue cementing situation will be. I was going to buy some more after today, but I don't know that I will now but I don't have access to an ultrasonic welder. So these are my thoughts moving forward. I'm gonna go dunk this in water and see if it bubbles up. Well, no bubbles, which is pretty great. So that is still a success. But, all right, thank you for hanging out with my prototypes today and my experiments. I will see you later.